Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme six, element nine, regional inequality. Get the date and title down. I'm Mr. S, and I'll be your five minute teacher. India is what is called a newly industrialized country, or an NIC, and it's experiencing rapid economic development. So this is leading to some social and cultural changes and regional inequalities between the different states of India. So let's have a look at what that pattern looks like. So we can see a map on the right hand side of the screen and this represents the GDP, so that's the gross domestic product and you can think of GDP as being the amount of money that an area earns based on the products and the services that it sells. So we can see the darker the colour, the greater the GDP is for that state in India. So places like Goa and Maharashtra have the highest GDP in India. And the lighter colours like Bidar have some of the lowest GDP in India. Now there is a general pattern that we can see in here. So there are more states with higher, G higher GDP in the south of India. Although there are some exceptions when we go further to the west, up in the north. And we've got the areas with the lowest GDP tend to be in the centre of the country. Now, this is not unique to India. We often find, if we talk about a country as a whole, countries that have a coastline tend to have high levels of development because they can then gain from trade with other countries. And it's easier to trade by sea than by air. It's uh, more economical. So these areas in the centre of India are what we call landlocked. So they're areas that don't have access to a coastline. So it's then harder for them to trade. What you can't tell on this map as well, though, is the physical geography element of it. So the north is actually pretty mountainous. And it makes trading even harder because the transport routes are even more difficult to complete because you've got to trans uh, transverse mountains, steep-sided cliffs. It makes trading quite difficult. Another element uh, to think about as well, if it's quite mountainous, then the soil quality is going to be quite poor, which in turn means that they're probably not going to be able to grow crops as well, which would link to reduced GDP. Some other factors that we can consider. So the West and the South actually have some of the, the lowest natural increases. So that means that there's not as many babies being born, so the population increase of that area is not going to be as large. Now, that actually, it doesn't sound it, but it does actually link quite nicely with GDP. So if we think of it in terms of development, if we've got fewer people in those locations, then we can spread the resources that are available more evenly across the people that do live there. So one of the best examples of this is Kerala. So Kerala is actually, on its own, a stage four on the demographic transition model, the DTM. So it's actually quite a developed region of India. And it's done that because it's put a lot of health and education programs in place to try and encourage people to have less children. And it actually really works. So their fertility rate is now 1.7. It's the same as the UK. So on average, a woman in Kerala would have between one and two children, whereas the rest of India are having perhaps three or four children. So that means that the resources that Kerala has can now be spread between the population more evenly so they get more of the resources available and that could be things like food, water, it could be access to services like education and health. So education and reduced fertility rates has allowed Kerala, Goa, Maharashtra to increase its development through that means. The South and the West are also very fertile regions and they export a lot of food, which is going to bring in more income as well. And coming back to the physical geography element, here's Rajasthan. It separates Gujarat and Haryana, which are more developed regions, but this is incredibly mountainous and it is also susceptible to drought as well. So its crops suffer a lot and its development therefore has suffered as well. So let's have a look at some of the consequences of this. 
For the richer areas, the consequences for them are, well, it has a positive multiplier effect, and we've looked at this before. So what it means is, well, they've got more GDP, which means they've got more money to spend on services and infrastructure, which generally would probably mean that they're going to, they're going to get a better education and they're going to be healthier, which means that they're able to do more work, which means it brings in more money, which then means it brings in better services, better healthcare, better transport. So this thing, the cycle continues because of the fact that it's got a high GDP. But in the poorer areas, it's got the opposite effect. So this would be called a negative multiplier, where because they don't have a great deal of GDP, it means that they can't put things in place for healthcare, education, improved transport. And so it leads to some of these things here. People end up protesting because of the differences between these two locations. You've got extremist movements because they perceive one area is getting better than the other. It leads to extreme thought and in some t cases extreme action against government institutions. Certain regions start asking for independence. So we've seen this in other countries. If you think of our own, the UK, Wales and Scotland feel that a lot of our decision making is made in London and therefore they feel that they are being isolated and want to be able to make their own decisions. So calling for more independence. Increased crime rate because people can't afford what they need so they have to resort to crime. And then public anger at political corruption. And political corruption is one of the biggest issues that India is having to deal with at the minute. Some of the money that's going into aid is not reaching the places it needs to because the local governments are essentially hoarding that money for themselves. Well, that's it for today. But continue your revision by completing the Now Try It task for homework. Class dismissed.